Hey, do buckaroos, how the heck are you? I am trying to be a whisperer. <laughs> Who else would I be, man? Uh, so I just picked this up yesterday. I actually had one at the tap room yesterday. Been trying to find this in stores around town. I haven't been able to look at it, so I finally got a chance to get to the tap room. So I could pick up a four pack. I'm gonna read a tad from their can here. We we took our same base recipe for our flagship IPA. It stepped it up a notch, adding more and more Citra and Azaka hops. When we thought we couldn't add any more hops to this beer, we did. Going through a third dry hopping on Mosaic. 9.2%, 90 IBUs. Though it doesn't list IBUs on the can, they did on their website. Uh, they, they do list that 9.2% uh, though. Uh, the, the, the aromas are what you might expect. I mean, you're going to get those tropical fruit notes as sort of a cloudy kind of apricot color. Using a snifter here. Holds a complete 12 ounces, so there you go. Uh, again, aromas are what you'd expect from a beer like this. Again, using those hops mentioned. Uh, citra, mosaic. You're going to get those tropical fruit-like aromas. I mean, if, if uh, you're familiar with, with tropical fruit notes, mango, papaya, you're going to get that kind of thing. You may get some pineapple. And personally, I'm, I'm certainly feeling some grapefruit. I'm feeling a lot of orange zest. There is a, almost a honey-like sweetness to the nose. A perfect uh, late summer, early fall IPA. It does feel light. Um, yesterday I had the mother's making trouble for the first time. It's a, it's a little, little, little richer, little toothier. It's a different kind of IPA. Some might, might ask me, well, which one's better, Tom? Well, neither is better. Well, what I'm talking about is two quality IPAs with two breweries with two distinctly different visions of a double IPA. Both are wonderful in their own way, so I, I hate to, that's why I hate to put grades on beers. I hate when folks ask me which is better. Neither is better. They're, they're both are great for different times. And I love both breweries. Both breweries are doing some awesome stuff. Oh, very nice. So I, I'm actually running the grill again. Uh, yesterday I, I was going to do some burgers and dogs and brats. I ended up just doing dogs and brats yesterday. So today my wife, I'm just grilling a burger for just the wife and I today. Uh, also finishing up some some pork. Um, uh, had a very small boneless pork butt that I typically you know smoke uh, for pulled pork, but this one I want to do different. I fixed a uh, seasoned uh, to to basically be carnitas for tacos. Oh. The hops linger on your palate on this one. This one, uh, this one stays with you a little bit. The finish is nice. It's very crisp. It kind of dances on your tongue there. A little sharp and peppery. Finish is very dry and clean. I, I like White River. Uh, they had a brewery change, I don't know how long ago. I don't know the exact time. But their beers have taken a different turn, a different direction, as it were. The original head brewer uh, really loved high ABV beers. He really loved Belgian beers. So even non-Belgian styles kind of had a Belgian feel about them. Uh, the, the, the new brewer there, he's got, he's more, you know, with the sensibilities of most uh, younger head brewers today. I mean, he likes this type of beer. Everything he does is, is very crisp, very clean, very much in keeping with what is trendy in the craft beer world. Although I love all the new stuff they're doing, there are a few old beers that they don't do anymore or, or, or do differently that I really miss, but it is what it is. That's how That's how it moves, you know?
again, this beer, they, you know, before they really weren't, they, they weren't really getting into the IPA thing. He really did, the, the original brewer, uh, really loved Belgian. So, I mean, even non-Belgian styles really had a Belgian feel to them. They were, they were all very rich beers. They all had a lot of character, a lot of nuances. Whereas, uh, I mean, double IPAs aside, uh, you know, it's, again, they're, they're going for more what's what's current. I guess some don't like me when I don't like when I use the word trendy. More what's current in craft beer today. You know, they're they're very accessible beers. Uh, but this double IPA is is beyond phenomenal. It really is. There is a certain dankness on the nose that you get from a beer like this. Um, I didn't notice it before, but as I'm as I'm checking the nose now, trying to be a pretentious beer guy, uh, I'm getting some melon on the nose, like a honeydew kind of melon on the nose that I didn't notice before when I had it at the brewery yesterday. There are some uh, some stone fruit notes, apricot specifically, somewhere in the middle there. Uh, surrounded by all that, you know, that tropical fruit, citrus goodness. It's just a damn fine beer. So there you go. Hey, I'm trying to beer whisper. I hope you all are having a, I mean, it, it is unseasonably warm here uh, it, at the end of October. I mean, it is crazy warm. I mean, so I had to, I felt like I, I had to take advantage and do some grilling. I uh, just felt like it was a moral imperative. So I'm hanging out here, enjoying a few beers with you. I hope you all are having a good weekend. I am trying to beer whisper. I am running for Beer Whisperer in Chief, and I approve this message.